So I've touched on Wales recently as a strange group that went from little hoof cuties to absolute behemoths. And I think it will be frankly rude not to touch on the creature of legend, the Leviathan. We've long been fascinated with sea monsters, often more so than anything terrestrial, and when you think about it, it makes sense. The oceans today remain largely unexplored, and we're finding new organisms all the time, things that seem to defy logic or normality seeming like alien creatures exist on this very planet, and that's nothing next to the countless organisms that are now extinct. Now often with these discoveries, we come up with fantastical stories that exaggerate what we currently know, only to find out that these things actually existed, and one of these cases is Leviathan. Back in 2008, researcher Class Post stumbled across a partial skull from the Pisco Formation within a coastal desert of Peru. Two years later, these remains were described by Post Olivia Lambert and colleagues as a new genus of raptorial sperm whale, naming it Leviathan melvilli. Now just to clear up with anyone that thinks I have a speech impediment, the genus part of the binomial name given is Leviathan, having been inspired by the biblical sea monster Leviathan, and the species name paying homage to Herman Melville, the author of Moby Dick. The reason for this is that Leviathan as a genus, whilst no longer a valid genus, is considered a junior synonym of Mastodon. So to avoid confusion, the author is elected to assign the original Hebrew name of the creature as the genus. Having said that, Leviathan melvilliae has become a synonym used for the same animal, so you'll often hear that thrown around. Now from the skull, paleontologists figured out that this beast was actually a member of the Physosauroidea more colloquially known as sperm whales. Difference here being that it was a lot bigger. Now size estimates are just that, estimates. Especially for an animal for which not much of the post cranial material is actually known. But paleontologists compared the size of this skull to the skulls of sperm whales whose full skeleton is known and went from there. The numbers they got from the nearly 10 foot long skull were roughly between 44 to 60 feet long and up to 57 tonnes. Now this is comparable to another predator in the oceans, but I will mention him in a minute. Present on the massive skull was a structure that supported the spermatocyte organ and melon present in all sperm whales that they used for echolocation. The other striking feature of Leviathan is the massive gnashes. The teeth alone were among the biggest in the history of the animal kingdom, being around a foot long. Not only this, but the zygomatic arches were pretty big in comparison to the rest of the skull showing that this whale potentially had one of the strongest bites in history, at estimates of around 20 tonnes, rivaling only one other for the largest bite force among vertebrates. Now usually with these paleo profiles I go into the environment of the animal, but this time the environment was... well, everywhere. Leviathan fossils and possible Leviathan fossils have been found around the globe, namely in North and South America, Africa and Australia. Like modern cetaceans, Leviathan was an ocean-dwelling predator that migrated across the seven seas, likely even to colder waters since it was better equipped for them than, say, sharks. During its time of existence, we see mostly modern groups that varied really only in size. Baleen whales were generally a lot smaller, and sharks had the large contribution of the genus Otodus, and it is this genus that is most interesting when we're looking at comparison with the Leviathan. Otodus is an extinct genus of shark with a few species within it. Now you may or may not have heard of it, but there is one species that is more famous by its species name and is one of the biggest predators in Earth's history. Otodus megalodon. Now megalodon will be getting its own video soon, but for the purposes of comparison, this shark lived alongside Leviathan and has been given roughly the same sort of length and weight estimates. Meaning that as a predator, this was most definitely Leviathan's fiercest rival. In terms of similarity with how and what it hunted, a good analogue would be modern orcas, hunting smaller aquatic mammals and sharks near the surface, as well as the medium-sized baleen whales that were more commonplace at the site. Now of course it is possible that Megalodon hunted slightly different prey, but competition in the ocean is a lot more common than it is on land. When we look at terrestrial environments, niche occupation is a lot more cutthroat. Reason for this is that when an animal is occupying a niche, especially a predatory one, 
any other competitors will have three options if they can't outcompete them quickly. Change niche, go extinct, or go somewhere else. Now the third option is a lot more difficult in terrestrial environments, so the results of such competition will happen a lot sooner. In the ocean with two competitors that are global, however, the loser of any sort of confrontation can simply swim somewhere else in the world through an environment where foods are plentiful. Now both these animals went extinct, and whales have done arguably their since, namely because they could handle colder temperatures at higher latitudes, so had a wider range of hunting but this is the reason that both of these super predators coexisted as rivals for so long. As for why it's not around anymore? Well, the leading theory behind their extinction is primarily based on their food. As the planet continued the cooling trend throughout the Neogene, the smaller baleen whales dwindled into nothing, favouring only the largest of baleen whales, which were way too big for Leviathan to bring down. As a result, they were unable to find enough food that they could catch to sustain their massive bodies. Unlike orcas, which just so happened to emerge around the time Leviathan was going extinct, being adapted for a wider range of food that was left. So there be the legend. So let me know down below what you thought of this video, your thoughts on the animal, and if you think that I'm godless scum that's perpetuating big conspiracy theories around evolution. Obviously I'm kidding, because you do it without me needing to prompt you. So I'll have fun running through those until I catch you guys. Next slide.